Hello everybody, my name is Justin Boos and I'm here to show you a few tips and tricks of how I work in Corel Painter. I am very experience based with my work and I really try not to get too caught up in the fundamentals before I even start having fun. I'll start now with my brush that I use. If you go to the pen section in your brushes up here, you can go down, let's see here down here to pens and just click on that and I like the flat color brush but I, I modify it just a little bit so once you click on that you'll notice that this kind of makes just your standard stroke here and what I like to do is kick that back to like a two pixel or even a one pixel for something as thin as I did here um, I don't actually know what size I use for this picture but this is pretty important because when you go to select a canvas and this isn't the original size that the canvas was when I was working on it but when you go to select a canvas you're gonna want to keep in mind how big or small the canvas is because when it's only as big as the painter default let's say open that up size two pixel brush is gonna be you know decent but if you have it down at like if you have it up at five you know you're gonna have a much thicker brush so I guess when you're picking your canvas usually I pick a bigger one because we like to print bigger than the the painter default right so what I like to do is just go in by inches and just make what you like to pull out at home uh, I think it's 11 by 8.5 Five. and then I like to make sure that the resolution is 300 here this is typically what I like to work on either um, vice versa on the width and height um, it just kind of makes me feel like I'm with a standard sheet of paper here I can start designing on so then after I do this there are a couple things that I can choose to do with my pen here depending on kind of how I'm feeling a lot of you people that work with pens and pencils I'm sure sometimes you switch your approach sometimes um, sometimes you want to use a soft pencil, sometimes you want to use one that's hard, or maybe you're in the mood for some ink. I think that's a huge thing to consider when you're starting a drawing. And one thing I like to do is see if I'm liking the flat look of the brush. I'm going to go to 100% on the canvas here. I like to see if I'm really enjoying that, maybe draw a couple of things, something simple, and just see if like you're kind of flowing with that. If not, maybe you want to add a little more dimension to your brush stroke. So go to size and you can play with some of these things. And one of the things that I play with a little bit is the expression. And I set that to pressure at the size and then we turn the minimum size down to about a little more than halfway. I don't like it. it's too sensitive. But this this is going to make it pressure sensitive right here. and depending on how you're feeling you're going to want to consider these things when making an ink drawing I know that sometimes I kind of like to play with this pressure stuff I never play with it too much myself I just feel like it once I start getting pressing the pen down too much I don't always personally like that I personally like just that no pressure play with the whatever pixel size that you're using I usually do a two or I've been kind of going a little thicker since that sometimes this is a little too thin when you're posting it on social media. So let's go to a three. See, uh, you can see I'm, I'm being cautious there of what presentation I'm making for the intention of it. If this were something like this last picture that you've seen, there's a lot of detail. I really want to go all out on this one and just kind of show for a while I was presenting Corel Painter onto my wall with a projector and drawing on it and it just felt like an out-of-body experience so this this contest opened up and I thought it would, would be the coolest thing to kind of show my what I feel like when I draw at my desk with a projector on our kind of vaulted ceiling wall up there it's that's ki kind of a pleasant experience that you can really dive into going back to our other canvas here now that I've established that my favorite thing is just this no pressure line, another thing you can consider I've been playing with recently is the stroke jitter. And this kind of turns it into more or less of a pencil. You can play with the opacity by pressing one through zero on your keyboard. And 
kind of have like this line base. So if I'm going to draw like a coffee cup in a pencil stroke, even though that's on like the most jittered thing ever, I'm still really just playing with the line. So these simple things help me bounce them back and forth between illustration, intentions, etc. But for now, we'll go back to just our standard pen like I really like using. Once I draw something, and let's just draw a cup here. I don't really like to color uh, with a lot of paint brushes because I really find that my my work is based around the line and I don't want to cover that up too much. So I'm going to go ahead and save this brush here in a palette by holding shift and dragging this brush out here and it's going to make a palette. So now I'm going to go to the glazing brushes which is where I use most of my fun color things but in the end I always kind of patch it through with a hard brush there flat color in there so those are the two brushes I kind of swear by is the flat color and the hard glazing brush and when I'm using the hard glazing brush I try to keep my lines on a layer not on the canvas and then I like to add a new layer and hit multiply another thing that I do is I lock the canvas when I lock the canvas I don't accidentally draw on it um, if I'm not working on another layer, in order to keep myself from messing up and, and getting really messy with the layers accidentally, I'll lock the layers that I'm not working on sometimes just to make sure that I'm working on the correct canvas. I use a lot of dreamy colors myself, just like kind of the hue variations down here, maybe with some warms. And what I like to do is I like to take that multiply with this brush and I just kind of make like this basis. Now what you can see here is I've got a little rainbow going on. Where do I get this? Color variability panel. And by the way, you can find all these panels in window and brush control panels and through this tab and this tab. So if you see any of these panels that you want to try out yourself, go ahead and just go there and look for it. So back to the rainbow canvas I have going on with the color variability, kind of the one that I swear by. And that's if I'm going to have purple, I can have it sway just in and out of purple a little bit on the color wheel. Color variability kind of helped me with keeping that consistency and flow of the color changing. So sometimes when I'm drawing flowers, if I want each flower to be different, I like to make this shoot me a different color every time. They tend to go together. I don't know. There's something that kind of deepens my experience again. So that might happen with flowers. I might add that with like a screen layer or overlay. Um, but then what I do after I, things really rainbow up, I take this hue and I turn it down either all the way or somewhat all the way. And I start to color pick and maybe add things. You can see what layers do with the with the lines. And now you you know you multiply that by a scale of this picture here and this started out with a lot of rainbow variation and a lot of that came from here you can see some of it in the flowers this ended up a dark purple but again that's because I like to select the colors I'm working with in that area and just kind of flatten it but if this were like a rainbow scene right here but I really like this this blue right here then what I would do is I'd grab that blue and turn this hue saturation out and I'd paint I'd paint it the way I want I can take these colors, eliminate one of them, make it more red in one area. Now I'm eliminating my lines because I don't have my layers all set up. But you can see now that I have some of that variation down, I can work with it and go back and forth. The one thing I do enjoy about the line is to go back to this canvas here. And without pressure, I'm not focused on color and I'm just making a shape. So one of the things I always practice with is bottles. If I'm seeing how a pen works and the tip that I would give you is to zoom into your canvas. What we're going to do is we're just going to draw without really knowing where we're going with it. Thank you guys so much for watching this little tutorial of mine. Here's uh, some of the other work that I've completed in Painter and I hope to see some of you doing some really neat things with ink brushes yourself. Thank you.
and just – 